Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and I'm here today with John from Marstar in Canada. You guys have guns up here. We do. Now, as an American gun owner, I'm fully cognizant of exactly what all the gun laws are here. Namely, you guys all have short barrel pump shotguns. Everybody. That's that's pretty much all we know about Canadian That's guns. pretty much all we have. We know that you're awesome because you don't have that short barrel shotgun thing. Right. But beyond that... I, what are the gun laws here? Let's talk about this. Well, on, on, on the topic of shotguns, uh, we are limited to length on shotguns. So even on a pump shotgun like this one, if it was shorter than 26 inches overall, that's a restricted shotgun. Okay, interesting. That's the same as our restriction, except without the barrel component. I see. So what you have here is the, the action and the stock on this is long enough that you can have, what is that, like a 10-inch barrel? I'd say so, yeah. Something like 10 that. or 12. So if you had a like a double, a break action, mm -hmm. with just going to have a shorter receiver, um, you're kind of limited to a longer barrel on that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So it's not quite the same as our laws there. Not quite the same. But this is because it's a pump and not a semi-auto. Okay. A semi-auto, that's where barrel length is really going to come into play. Okay. So anything semi-auto that is center fire has to have an 18.5-inch barrel or greater to remain in a non-restricted status. Okay. So I guess we should start by saying there are... Correct me if I'm wrong here. There are three categories of firearms for possession up here. That's correct. Uh, Non-restricted, yes. restricted, and prohibited. That's correct. Okay. So why don't you tell us what are the three? What are the what do those entail? So non-restricted is going to be you can take this out into the woods, crown land in your backyard, given the you know the the laws, and uh, shoot it wherever you want. Restricted is going to be shooting at a range only, any okay. certified range in Canada. And prohibited, for the most part, you just can't shoot them. There's nowhere to, to fire a prohibited firearm if you are lucky enough to have the license for one. Okay. So, if it's unrestricted, and this would be an example of an unrestricted gun. Correct. Because it meets the overall length requirement. It's manually operated. Um, what do I have to do? I mean, it can't just be, like, I can walk into a flea market and buy this. Not at all. Uh, all, fi all gun owners in Canada have to have a firearms license, which okay. you need to take a, it's a two-day class for a firearms uh, license. Okay. You can then apply to take another firearms license course in a restricted, okay. um, which is another two days. But uh, yeah, you have to go, you have to pass a course and okay. you have to be trained to do so. And is it anyone who passes the course gets the license or is there also some level of discretion where some agent at some level can just go, yeah, no. Once you pass your course, you definitely go through a background check before you're issued a permit. Okay. Then once you have a permit, you're pretty much good to go. Okay. Yeah. Does that restrict the number of guns you can own? Uh, for the most part, no. Okay. You guys are ahead of a lot of parts of Europe uh, in that way. In certain cases. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's this. You could then, once I have my firearms owner's license, I can walk into a sporting goods store or Marstar yep. and just buy a gun. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It's not too bad. So this one here, same thing. 18.5 inch barrel. This is a semi-auto M305. It's an M14 replica. Okay. Um, because it's center fire and we're 18.5 inches, we're still in the non-restricted status. Ah, okay. So if this were an M1 carbine with a 16 inch barrel, restricted. it'd be restricted. Yep. But an M14, because it's a little bit longer, that's isn't. right. That's Interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah. And one of, actually, I should have said at the beginning, one of the other things that we know in the U.S. is that you guys apparently have the gravy train to Norinco. All the, all the stuff that Norinco makes, you guys can get here, and we can't, because our government has decided that uh, we should have a trade embargo against Norinco. Right. So, uh, in fact, that AR and this M14 are both actually Norinco. They are. This is a CQA. Okay. Um, now, this is a semi-auto centerfire rifle also, but there's a catch. One, it's got the 14.5-inch barrel, so it's going to be restricted by barrel okay. length because it's a semi. But in now, Canada... Now, wait a minute. It's got a flash hydra on, so that's actually 16. It is 16, but Canada says if you can take the flash hider off, um, it's 14.5. Okay. So it's actually, they're checking, basically checking barrel length by rifling and not huh. by the length of the actual barrel okay. with the flash hider. Can you, like, weld it on or something? Would that count? Or are they just always going by rifling? I've been told you cannot weld it on. Uh, huh. You can weld it on, but that it would still apply as a 14.5. Interesting. Because it can just be removed. That's okay. what they say. Um, so the magic number is 18 and a half. 18 and a half. That ain't got 18 and a half. No, but it doesn't matter because this is a variant of an AR-15 platform, okay. which makes it restricted by name. Ah, okay. In Canada, we have to deal with certain firearms that are restricted purely based on name and look. 
So whereas every variant of the AR-15, even one with a 20 or 22 inch barrel, would be restricted because okay. the firearm in its base is restricted. The same with an AK-47 platform, that's okay. going to be prohibited. And any variation of the AK, like a Dragunov, is also prohibited in Canada, regardless of barrel length. Regardless of the fact that the Dragunov isn't really actually related to the AK? We're not going to get into they that. They interpret that that way? They do interpret it that Interesting. way. Interesting. Okay. And uh, so what else does that apply to? I mean, is, is there... There's guess, a whole bunch of guns that are going to be prohibited based on look and... Well, from what I can tell, just look. Stair Aug okay. is prohibited. FN Fal is prohibited. G3, MP5 variants, all prohibited by name. Interesting. It like prohibit the Fal and the G3, but not the M14. Yep. It's uh, you haven't seen terrorists in movies running around with M14. Not yet, and there so better not be. We should make we sure to keep some. it that way. Let's please. Uh, <laughs> that that's interesting in that it's much like some of the states with assault weapons uh, regulations in the United States, where there's right. there's a list of criteria, but then there's also a list of guns specifically by name. Now, in our case. In those states, it's pretty much the literal name on the receiver. So someone can make an AR-15 under a different brand name and call it the ABC-123, and then it's no longer listed by name, which is kind of a loophole for, for us in some cases, and I guess not the case here. Not the case. The, uh, what, what we have in Canada is if you can put an AR-15 upper onto the lower, it's an AR-15. Ah, okay. um, we do have some companies that are working around that by designing an AR-15 type rifle that doesn't really, you know, meet with the AR-15 uh, variant, and uh, we're hoping to get those in a non-restricted uh, status. Okay. There's always people working around uh, it's the, some arbitrary ru rules like these. Indeed. Okay, so we've got unrestricted, we've got uh, restricted, and so I guess once I've taken the safety class and gotten, I can then go get a a background check and a license to own restricted firearms. Yes. And then I can take those to the range and shoot them, but I can't just like wander around. Open. You can only take them to the range and back, okay. and you can only discharge them at the range. You can't discharge okay. them at home or in the woods or anywhere, uh, private land. Okay. Certified ranges only. But an unrestricted gun, I can shoot anywhere that it's safe, basically. Anywhere that you're legally, yeah, anywhere that where the discharge of firearms is permitted. Okay. Non-restricted can be done in your backyard if you live on a farm or something. No problem. All right, so... That's, we've got long guns here. How do these categorizations, classifications apply to handguns? Handguns is uh, generally going to be restricted or prohibited. Okay. Uh, they, they always are. This one happens to be prohib because it has a very short barrel. Okay. If it had a 4.25 inch barrel, we could classify it as restricted. This is an extra barrel we have uh, just for that to, uh, to rebarrel it, to have it changed to a restricted class. But because it's so short, this one falls under a prohib class. Okay, so it's basically the same thing. Just like this... If you cut the barrel down on the shotgun anymore, you would have a, a restricted gun. That's right. The magic number for pistol barrels is four and a quarter. That's right. To distinguish between restricted and prohibited. That's right. Okay. But even a restricted firearm, if I were to rebarrel this, this is a restricted firearm like the AR-15. I can only take this to a certified range. Okay. I can't carry this. I can't conceal carry, open carry. I mm -hmm. can't take this with me camping. This stays in my safe until I'm ready to go to the range. And okay. then it goes to the range and back. Okay. Yeah. All right, now there's still the prohibited to deal with. Yes. And you say prohibited, but while we don't have any on frame here, we've been doing a bunch of shooting with, like, machine guns and stuff today. All prohibited. So, Everything full auto is prohibited. Um, Short-barreled pistols, like this one, are going to be prohibited. And yet, there it is. So... Why is the RCMP not right now busting through the door? Well, Marstar has a license for prohibited devices, as you know. Okay. We have full auto suppressors. Anything uh, prohibited, we're allowed to have. Okay. Um, because of our licenses. So for us, it's okay. For civilians in Canada, unfortunately, not not the case. Okay. Are there? Is this like a grandfathered thing? Did they used to allow some of these guns? From my understanding, yes. Uh, back in the day, you could have prohibs. In fact, there's quite a few people in Canada, older people, who have prohib licenses because they got them when they were available, and now they're they can keep them and they can grandfather them in their family, but they cannot acquire any more prohibs. Okay. And I, you we're also talking about something that seemed a little uh, unfortunate and kind of weird in that, so you can only shoot a restricted gun at a registered range. That's right. You can only shoot a prohibited gun. Where? I don't think you can. As okay. far as I know, prohibited guns, there are no ranges in Canada, uh, well, open ranges, that specifically allow the use of prohibited firearms. Okay. So in a lot of cases, guys with a prohibited firearm get to keep it at home. So, yeah, if you can only take it to and from a range, 
and there are no ranges that qualify. It's like you're allowed to have it, but you can't ever take it out the front door of the house. That's correct. Interesting. Okay. And those are, you said those are grandfathered down. Is that inevitable, you know, uh, forever? Or is it only one generation? What's going to happen to all those guns? I th I'm pretty sure it's forever. I think it can keep going. Um, if someone decides not to pass it down, then it has to be either uh, sold to someone with a proper license or surrendered to the RCMP. Okay. So you have this gradually dwindling pool of people with prohibited licenses. That's right. That's kind of like our um, our machine gun manufacturer or dealer system, where we have this class of dealer sample machine guns that can only be owned by this relatively small pool of machine gun manufacturers and dealers. Now, we can still you can still apply for a new license to become one of those people, unlike your prohibited licenses. But mm -hmm. you have these two classes of guns selling amongst one in a little small pool, and I would assume those prohibited guns are worth a lot less than one that you can sell to. Pretty much anyone. They would be at a significantly uh, lower rate, for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah, like our dealer sample machine guns that mm -hmm. are worth a lot less than transferable ones. Big time. Interesting. Okay. That's very interesting. So, um, oh, I know. There's one other thing. In Thus far, I've traveled to a bunch of different places, and so far, everywhere I have been, there's always some cutoff date where it's like, before this date, it's just so obsolete that we don't care, and so they're unregulated. Yes, that's true. We call that the antique date. Okay. So uh, the magic number in Canada is 1898. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, so that's exactly what it is for the U.S. Anything made before 1898, uh, sorry, 1898, that isn't a 22 rimfire hmm. would be considered antique. An antique okay. Like this pistol right here. Sorry, revolver. This is going to be an antique uh, revolver. Okay, nice. So it's a Webley made, uh, Mark II. Yep, made before 1898. And okay. it is a centerfire revolver, and you do not need a firearms license to own this firearm. Okay. Now, does that mean I can carry this places I could carry an unrestricted gun? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. You could, you could take it into the woods, go hunting with it. Uh, absolutely. So, so there must be like a huge market for Colt single action armies up here, right? You've got that, a huge production of a very and very much a pre eighteen ninety eight gun. Yes, but there are some calibers that are not allowed. Regardless of date, Man, they can't just change the rules like that. No, they do. They do. Uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, yeah. they always do, don't they? It's, uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of different calibers are going to be not allowed, um, including rimfire calibers and uh, some of the, the bigger. Okay, uh, like the 45 Colts, the 44, right. 4440s, but 455 Webley's okay. This one's okay. All right, this one's allowed. Okay. Yeah. Whew. All right. Well, cool. I think that actually will help clue in a lot of our American viewers. And a lot of our European viewers on the state of uh, what you can own here and what you can't. It's always interesting, you know, regulations like this are pretty much always written by people who don't fully understand, certainly the initial regulations are written by people who don't get the whole wide world of what they're actually applying to. Unfortunately. And you end up with, always, there are just some weird, interesting idiosyncrasies. Like, the vast popularity of the M14 in Canada. By weird sets of loopholes. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. Well, cool. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, so, if you are in Canada and you have cool guns or you need cool guns, where would you go to get them? Um, there's a lot of different places available. Uh, you know, there's there's shops, there's online stores, there's, you know, Canadian Tire is a good one, and um, obviously Marstar Canada is a great place to stop. I was going to say, is there not one in particular that might cross <laughs> your mind? Well, yeah, we definitely have a great website, and uh, feel free to check it out, uh, anything you want. They're cool guys. I'm trying to help them give a plug, and he's too humble to do it. So, check out Marstar for uh, cool shooter stuff in Canada. Uh, do not bother to call them if you're an American and you want one of these because our government says no, and they will very curtly... Uh, actually, they'll probably just delete your email and ignore you. Um, but unfortunately, one of the loopholes is they get these and we don't. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this brief look into the legal status of firearms up in Canada. Stay tuned uh, tomorrow for some other interesting forgotten weapons.